What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films again, and I'm back with another idiotic video for you to watch. Today I'm gonna talk about that Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, that new joint that just got released. And from now on, it's just Blackmagic 6K. All right, I'm not doing that whole name action. So yeah, yesterday, the announcement date, I said that I had it in my cart and I decided not to buy it because I can't manual focus or rack focus worth crap, so, I had a whole day to think about it. I watched countless of YouTube videos, which means I watched countless of Squarespace, Storyblocks, LUT Pack, preset, sponsorships all day long. Okay, literally, that's all I watched was Blackmagic and sponsorship videos. All right, so my conclusion, I'm still not gonna get it. And why am I not getting it, you know? Sony apparently is not doing anything so far, you know, up until now. Um, I have a bunch of Sony bodies. I got two a7 III's, an a7R III, and an Alpha 6400, which I'm filming on right now, which took me exactly five seconds to set up, and it is focusing on my face without question. I don't have to worry about this crap. It's just so easy to set up. And one thing I noticed and I'm probably gonna make a bunch of people mad and upset and people gonna cry and I'm gonna get dislikes. I don't care. I watched a lot of Blackmagic 6K or Blackmagic 4K videos because there isn't any real 6K videos out yet. And the ones that I watched, I mean, I'm gonna be real here. Like if you didn't tell me that was shot by a Blackmagic 6K, I wouldn't know. If you told me it was shot by Canon, I'd be like, okay. If you told me it was shot by Sony, I'd be like, all right because I really couldn't tell. And this was watching on my uh, 4K Dell monitor at my, my salary job. So with the footage that I watched uh, uh, of the Blackmagic 4K, people are gonna say, you know, they got it because they want, they shoot film, you know? They're, they're, they're filmmakers. They don't just do YouTube and stuff like that. Um, and apparently all I do is YouTube. That's why I shoot Sony. But when I watch their stuff, it's underwhelming, okay? And uh, the reality is that is not the camera's fault. It's the user's fault because they are not using that camera to its full potential. There's a lot more to filmmaking than the gear that you're using, the camera body, the gimbal, whatever it is. It's up to the person behind the camera. And I'll say that time and time again, I have seen dudes shooting with Alpha 6000s making amazing films. I've seen dudes shooting with A7S II, Alpha 6500, Canon 6D, Canon EOS R, Panasonic GH5, Panasonic GH4, Alpha 6300. I've seen dudes shoot films, all they use was a monopod and one lens the whole time, or, or um, no gimbal, amazing films, okay? I've seen great films on cell phone footage, but I was watching through all this black magic 4K videos and I've seen a lot of pretty below average videos. And once again, it's not the camera's fault. So let me make this clear. All because you own a cinema camera does not make you a filmmaker, a good one. Now that that's out of there. So I was thinking about it and hey, look, like I clearly own a bunch of Sony stuff. And because some people say, all I do is film YouTube and crap. Somehow YouTube with only uh, about 1,800 subscribers, I could own all this stuff, all this nonsense. I own this stuff because somehow 1,800 subscribers on YouTube fund me. No, I fund these things because I work hard as a filmmaker. Yes, I shoot a lot of weddings, but those are still films. Those are documentary films. I don't consider them filming events. They, I'm documenting someone's wedding and I'm trying to tell a story with it. I shoot commercial and other random stuff and YouTube is part of it. So now, now, now why would I not want to invest into a, a Blackmagic 6K? Well, here I have an a7 III and I take this lens cap off and let's say I'm shooting a wedding. Something's happening. I got the shot, okay? Easy. IBIS. 135GM IBIS. I'm getting the shot. I don't even have to look 
and I know I'm getting a shot because the autofocus is that good. The screen is tilted. I could look at it like this. I could look at it, see what's going on. And I'm gonna be honest with you, nobody on YouTube, nobody on Vimeo is going to tell if I shot with a Sony, a freaking black magic or a red or whatever, so long as I film with proper lighting, with proper exposure, and I don't grade the crap out of it with some YouTube LUT. Say I'm out there shooting, well, say I take my, my daughter out. She's two years old, she's running around, and I wanna take pictures, and I want to shoot video of her. What camera has eye autofocus can take photos of her while she is running at me and get 95% of the shots that I, 95% sh of the photos that I take of her, and I could hit the record button and film her at the same time. Locked on. And she's like, what? Three feet tall, so I gotta bend down. And guess what? I could look at this screen down like this. Just this. Oh, not to mention, this thing will last all day long. I don't need to put all this nonsense grip on here. I don't need to put an extra battery here. I don't need to do anything. That battery will last me all day long. Yes, 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 yes. The 6K, the Blackmagic 6K has 13 stops of, my, of dynamic range in RAW. The majority of the dudes who own the Blackmagic camera don't even shoot in RAW. They shoot in ProRes which I'm not even sure this week, maybe they get 13 stops. But Sony, video, HLG3, HLG2, whatever, I believe it gets 10 stops of dynamic range. And of course, if I film and expose properly and don't do stupid stuff, I don't need all that dynamic range. And of course people argue, oh, well, if you're in a studio environment, you wanna use that professional cinema camera, well, Say this is a studio. Do you really need 13 stops of dynamic range in here? Let me ask you that question. Do you? Do you need 6K in here? Do you need 4K in here? I mean, most, most dudes in YouTube has been just upscaling 1080p up to a 4K. I have been doing it. it. Looks fine to me. Yes, I agree that Sony needs to release something. 4K 60, 10 bit internal, 422, all that stuff. Yeah, they are a little bit behind and they need to hurry up. And I'm hoping that one of the two rumored cameras that is being released later this month, August 2019, that it will be a better cinema camera. Gives us better specs. Give us this amazing uh, autofocus. Give us good IBIS. I'm hoping for all those things. Um, A7 III battery. You know, the same battery, 873, 87R3, the Z battery, whatever you want to call that. But I, I apologize because usually I tell a lot of jokes and I'm funny and stuff like that, or I try to be funny, but um, I don't know, the stuff just gets me heated sometimes when I see like borderline stupidity on, um, on uh, YouTube or people on Facebook groups talking about how, oh, Sony sucks. You know, even the Sony groups, oh, Sony sucks. You know, they're not doing anything. I've got to like jump over to Blackmagic. It's only $2,500. Well, you gotta buy a $2,500 body. You gotta switch all your glass over, right? You gotta switch all your glass over and then you're gonna have to buy a cage. You're gonna have to buy an SSD to try to record um, raw, you know, if you're even gonna do that. Um, and you're gonna have to learn how to rack focus if you haven't already because you can't, because autofocus on a Blackmagic camera sucks. Okay, you could try, you could autofocus once, it might hunt a little bit and it's not gonna track anybody. Okay, so if you're moving forward and back, your subjects can be out of focus. But clearly, Sony is different. All right? So imagine if you're shooting a wedding and the bride is walking down the aisle and you're shooting with a, a, a black magic uh, uh, camera. You're over here, oh, I'm professional now. I'm shooting that ProRes action. You got a big old, Probably more like this one. You got a big old monitor up here. Oh, oh yeah, look at me. Look at my professional. Oh, I gotta, I gotta focus on her. She's walking down. I want that depth of field, but I gotta like focus rack. Uh oh, oh, it's hunting. You don't, you're not gonna have that problem with the Sony. You just pretty much just aim the camera there at f1.4 and it'll lock into the bride and she's gonna just be tracked down. 
And honestly, if I went up to the bride, he's like, oh, look, look, we shot this in, in, in RAW and the Blackmagic uh, 6K camera. And then, you know, we rack focused you all the way down the aisle. She'd be like, okay, here's the deal, okay? Yes, I really want 4K 60. I want 10 bit. I want to play around with colors more, get more or, or, uh, color depth and all that, all those things. And I know that most people on YouTube, most clients, commercial clients, whatever, will not notice these things, okay? And, you know, all these people, whatever camera brand a person owns, whether it be Canon, Sony, Panasonic, Nikon, GH5, you're all gonna be talking about color size, bit rates, 8-bit, 10-bit, how many megabytes per second your file is, all this stuff. And at the end of the day, after you edit your video, you drop YouTube LUTs over it anyway, talking about how you're gonna color grade. And that's real talk. That is real as crap. And if that wasn't real, then YouTubers won't be trying to sell LUT packs in their videos. And I'm not saying this to hate on their hustle. I'm saying this because I'm just trying to give you the facts. So don't sit there and talk about, oh, I want to shoot raw, I'm gonna shoot 10 bit. No, you're not. And you go ahead and try, and then you're gonna do all that n nonsense. And I watch your video, it's all uncomposed, the footage is shaky, you can't focus, things are out of focus. I have no idea what you're doing with your video, and it's just bad. And I'm not trying to say this to Joan. I'm not the greatest filmmaker either. Everyone is a work in progress, but don't come at me telling me that because you have a Blackmagic 6K or 4K, 8K, whatever, that somehow you're all of a sudden like this big top filmmaker. I could give freaking Christopher Nolan a, a dang like Sony Next 6 from 2014 and he will film a way better film than me with a red, okay? So don't come at me telling me that because you got some camera that you're some type of beast mode filmmaker because you are not. Um, what else do I got to say today? Let, let me be clear, I am not knocking on the Blackmagic 6K at all. That is an amazing camera. I mentioned in my previous video, that was a beast. I was this close to buying it, but then, you know, reality just hit me that that camera is not gonna make me a better filmmaker. It's not gonna make me a better videographer, cinematographer. It's not gonna make me a better storyteller. I, it is up to me to up my skills, to up my, my abilities, to, to see things better, to, to get into the flow of things, to, to whatever it is, it's up to me to improve that, okay? I am definitely at the point where, um, you know, my eyes are getting more used to 4K, you know, it, I could definitely tell the difference between something shot in 1080 and 4K. And, um, you know, a lot of the more artsy cinematic stuff, you know, it requires some slow motion. And I do want that 4K 60. So I'm hoping that Sony would hurry up and just give me 4K 60. I don't care if it's crop. It just can't be micro four thirds. I don't care if it's super 35, full frame, whatever. I just want 4K 60. Give me like 10 bit. Give me, what is that? What is that run on the FS7? Like 223 megabytes per second. We all know that Sony is really good with working with small file sizes. You know, all the Canon fanboys could grow throw that 400 megabits per second um, at me all, all day. But when it comes time to look at the di dynamic range, those highlights are gone. Meanwhile, Sony's 8-bit 100 megabits per second, there's tons of highlight detail. There's tons of shadow detail. So don't give me that megabits per second crap. It varies from camera to camera. Okay, not all cameras, bit rates, and, and, and file sizes are created equal, okay? If, if, like, bragging about how big your camera file sizes are is talking about, like, how, you know, you have a V8 engine, 300 horsepower, 400 horsepower, whatever, and you're gonna get smoked by that four-cylinder turbo because that four-cylinder turbo is just packed with horsepower. AK talking about 400, yeah, you got 400 megabytes per second. Meanwhile, this 100 megabits per second has more dynamic range than your old camera. I mean, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not gonna get it. I'm not getting a Blackmagic 6K. Not because the camera's bad, not because Sony is better. It's because these Sonys work for me. Um, and I'm gonna wait, you know, they're going to release something the next few months and I am going to wait and see what they're going to do. And I really highly encourage other Sony users to do the same. 
because you're going to realize the investment that you have to actually put into that Blackmagic 6K to get it to be as easy and quick to use as your Sony's. You're going to have to rack focus. You're going to have to have additional batteries. You're going to have to have an additional monitor because you can't do low shoots. You, you, you shoot blind pretty much. Um, and another thing that people are, need to realize that you got these, these dials, shutter, all this stuff, instead of like a touch, touch screens are nice, but sometimes, you know, when you want to switch shutter speed real quick, it's just better to just spin a dial. You know, there's a lot of things you would have to get used to and you have to change. You easily spend 3,500 bucks to rig it up just so that it will actually last and work the same way it would if you just picked up your Sony camera and went. Um, you know, buy, you have to buy different lenses, all that stuff. And then what's gonna happen is Sony's gonna release A7S III, Alpha 7000, and it's gonna have 4K 60 and all this stuff, and you're gonna be like, oh crap, I shouldn't have switched. I say just wait and see what Sony does, and that's what I'm gonna do. If by the end of 2019, Sony's still messing with me doing this 4K 38-bit crap, then I would definitely switch to something else, which is most likely the Blackmagic 6K at this point. Everything works. I don't mind learning how to rack focus. Um, you know, I'm probably gonna have to end up keeping a Sony camera just for photography, but I would definitely switch to Blackmagic for cinema because I do want to be able to shoot in 4K 60. Yeah, you know, I am sorry if I offended people with what I said, my opinions or whatever, but I'm just telling you, you don't need to switch cameras every six months or you don't need to switch cameras because this camera came out with these specs or whatever. Let's be honest here, guys. Most of us aren't even like using our cameras to its full potential. You know, most of us, you know, we're not professional colorists, you know? We, we, we move the highlight dials, the, sh uh, the, the, the shadow dials. We drop LUTs on our footage and call it a day. Like we don't sit there and, and painstakingly color our videos. And we act like we need all this extra data, all these extra bit rates. Another thing, all you do is you say that you rack focus, you could pull focus and all that stuff, um, that suddenly you are some type of professional cameraman or something like that. Um, newsflash. Professional cameras on movie, uh, movie sets, they don't, they don't rack focus. They have a dedicated rack focus dude focusing for them. So literally that cameraman has an even better autofocus system than we do. They actually have a human being autofocusing for them on the side. Meanwhile, you know, we rely on our cameras to autofocus. So what the heck is the difference between me shooting and relying on autofocus and another guy shooting on the Avengers set holding his camera while another guy focuses for him. You know why? Because you want to focus. The reason why it's beneficial, autofocus is beneficial. And this is why I encourage people to use it and learn its nuances is because once you know exactly what that autofocus is doing, you can concentrate more on your composition. You can concentrate on getting the shot. You can concentrate on the exposure. You can concentrate on the actual imagery of the shot instead of worrying about your focus peaking, trying to see if it's in focus, out of focus. Meanwhile, you know, your shot is getting uncomposed. Meanwhile, your camera is shaking. I mean, I, I benefit from autofocus, I think, in terms of keeping the camera steady because really all I have to do is hold the camera like this, make sure the shot's in focus, make sure I'm not, my hands aren't shaking and I'm getting the shot. Now, if I was rack focusing, I'll be sitting there like, really looking at it like, oh, am I, am I in focus? I'm over here like trying to turn the dial, all this stuff. Like, it's just an extra thing that I don't have to worry about. I don't know why you guys would want to worry about that. So you can't knock on autofocus when cameraman in cinema has someone focusing for them. And there's a reason for that. Anyways, that, that ended up being a, a kind of a rant, but long story short, I am not getting the 6K. I'm gonna stick with Sony and I'm gonna wait for, see what they're gonna release. Again, they're gonna release two APS-C cameras by the end of August, 2019, and poss possibly one or two full frame cameras um, end of September or into October. That's what I'm hearing. That is the rumors I hear, I'm hearing about, so. The Blackmagic 6K, amazing camera. I'm not knocking that at all. If you want to get it, go ahead, do your thing. But I'm going to tell you, you don't need it.
to be a good filmmaker. You don't need 6K to be a good filmmaker. What you do need to do is lighten up.